Hey everybody, Haku here with, uh, I guess my review slash discussion, whatever you want to call this really, for Blue Reflection, and it's a game that I got recently, I played through it, it took me about like maybe a month and a half or so, um, yeah, I did actually, I don't get to play games that often, I don't have a ton of free time between YouTube and work and stuff outside of YouTube, uh, but I, <laughs> I had to make a video on it. Because I think it may be my favorite game I've ever played. I, I don't know how this came to be. I feel like there are games, you know, that I played in my childhood and stuff. And I'm like, oh, they were very formative for me. And I enjoyed them. And they really left a lasting impact on me. But here I am in my 20s. I didn't imagine uh, finding a game that I feel like would stick with me in that same sort of way. And possibly be the most impactful game to me. Uh, but either way, I only have a few bullet points here to uh, keep me on track, just to make sure I don't forget anything that I really wanted to say. Uh, but most of this, I'm not going to really do too much uh, with notes or bullet points or anything. I'm going to kind of just talk off the top of my head uh, for what I thought about this, because, I don't know, I kind of wanted to um, shoot from the heart with this one. But uh, either way, gonna try not to cry at any point during the video because man, this game messed me up. Those of you who are on the uh, Discord know how much this uh, game was really getting to me towards the end. Uh, but so basically, to get into a little bit for what the game actually is, Blue Reflection is sort of a magical girl RPG um, made by Gust and produced by Koei Tecmo, I believe. Um, and. <laughs> The way it works is I've heard it compared a lot to the Persona games, which I haven't played. I have Persona 5, though, so I'm going to play it soon, hopefully. Um, but I've heard it compared a lot to them. So you spend your days, of course, at the school, and you talk to different characters and stuff, make friends, and uh, go, go out after school to different sort of dates or hangout sessions, whatever, with them. Um, it's easier to say dates, even though that implies a romantic connotation. Um, it's easier to just say dates. Uh, so you go and do all that during the day, and it's an open world school, and it, it feels really, it feels like living in a slice of life anime to play it. It, uh, it had a really, really good feeling just playing through that. But also, main character, you become a magical girl, got turn-based combat, party of three characters, sort of your simple, basic turn-based combat kind of stuff, where you go off to an isekai alternate world, and you fight demons. So a uh, kind of typical magical girl fair, typical um, uh, sort of, um, I guess, turn-based combat stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's b the basic uh, crux of it. But what really hit me and what meant a lot to me as a person, and like I feel like never have I ever thought that playing a game would make me better as a person, but I came away from this game feeling like, I, I felt like a little kid. I'm like, I learned lessons here. I feel like a better person having played it. Uh, but yeah, it impacted me pretty heavily. Um, and I'd never really experienced a story like that that really hit me in that way, at least from video games. I'd never experienced any sort of story like that. Um, and playing through it to uh, give more credence to me knowing about whatever's in the game, I went and I got every trophy in the game. Also, I went and made sure that I upgraded all the fragments I had all the way, which was an optional thing, but once I got started doing it, I kept wanting to play, so I went ahead and did all of that. Uh, plus, I also did the, um, the dates with each of the friend characters until I had seen every single scene with every single one of them. So I assume that I've seen basically every single thing that the game has to offer, except for the DLC outfits. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, beyond that, some things I thought about the game. The friend side stories were all amazing. I loved hanging out with the friends and experiencing all their side stories. That was probably one of my favorite things in the game. But the main story, how great it was, really, really hit me. I think it is like, Madoka Magica is great, and you know I like that. I like Magical Girl Raising Project. But I feel like this is the Magical Girl story. It, for me, before, was, um, it was Madoka Magica. When you talk about magical girls, that is the story. But now, Blue Reflection is the story for me. Um, and 
I had brought up to people in the Discord when I was talking to them, I was like, you know, I've only had maybe one game before make me tear up, but I've teared up at some of the little things. I think it was uh, when you were getting introduced and told Yuri's backstory and stuff. I was like, I actually teared up a bit, so this is special for me. This is something I've only done with, like, maybe one other game. And then Chapter 10 came along, and I actually I, I cried for the first time ever at a video game. And it was something that I saw coming. I saw the, what was happening in Chapter 10 coming uh, for at least a while through the game. But it still didn't make it any less impactful. It still hit me that hard. Um, and then Chapter 11 came, and Chapter 11 was rough. I cried so hard through Chapter 11 that there was one point, and I brought it up again in Discord. I was like, I gotta step away for a minute, and I have to take a break. I had to take a break during Chapter 11 because I was just crying too hard at this game. And then Chapter 12 comes along, the final chapter, and of course I'm not getting into spoilers or anything, uh, that's something I want to avoid for the review, so that if you watch this and want to try it out yourself, I don't spoil anything for you. Uh, normally I wouldn't care that much if you don't care, because I assume most people wouldn't for most games, but because the story was so important to this, at least in my opinion, uh, not giving anything away, but chapter 12 I will say was so incredible. Uh, my blood was pumping, I was so excited, edge of my seat, um, and I enjoyed it so much. And especially one little thing, I don't remember it don't remember if it took place in chapter 11 or chapter 12, but when you uh, go around to each of your friends to ask them about what they thought before the final boss fight, and uh, you get the text message from each one of them, that hit me hard too. But um, yeah, I feel like after completing the final boss and just melting at the ending of the game, I was sat there watching the credits roll for the game with a huge smile on my face and tears streaming down my face. Uh, it, I was crying, but I was so happy at the same time. I was an absolute mess watching the credits. And then the illustrations after the credits, I just lost it. I was bawling. I was done. This game destroyed me. But uh, and because of that, it's it's sort of like a um, Maiden Abyss sort of feeling where after I watched that, I was like, that took such an emotional toll to watch that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back and rewatch that show for a while. This is another thing where like, I feel like it was such a good game that I'm going to go back and want to play it again some sometime, but it's going to take a while to heal up from playing it the first time. Uh, so yeah, either way. I guess that's basically about it I want to talk about the story because I don't want to get into spoilers or anything just know that the story is incredibly good and the best part of the entire game um, and just the side stories and stuff with the different characters are kind of what carries it a lot of the way um, then to talk about the gameplay a little um, most of it was great there are some things to critique though nothing is perfect uh, I thought that the cutscenes and the dialogue were really really great the voice acting I loved um, and even the um, subtitles or localization they did, I thought it was quite good. Sure, there may have been a... Uh, I feel like you don't get a localization without some spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes here and there, but it was pretty rare to see that. Um, and in general, they really captured the emotion of everything really well, I felt. And with the cutscenes, a lot of the animation, the boss fight cutscenes, were really, really good. That's what, a part of me after playing this, I was like, oh, an, anim an anime based on this would be so, so good. But then I also thought to myself, what can the anime do, really, if they made an anime on it, that the game wouldn't have already done better because it was that good? And the cutscenes, I was like, no matter how they animate them for the anime, uh, the cutscenes for the boss fights and stuff were so good that um, I don't even know if they could beat the cutscenes already there unless they did a really, they had a really good studio to do it. Um, like I said, my favorite part of the gameplay probably was um, building up the relationship with the different friends, learning all their stories, going through all their stories, doing the um, dates at all the different locations and stuff. Uh, one thing that was absolutely the best, table chat. Uh, there were a lot of points throughout the game where I already mentioned crying through it, but there were so many parts that I was just laughing so hard, and table chat was a big source of that. The table chat messages, which to explain it, it's basically, Table Chat was an app on your phone that's basically text. You open it and you text all the different friends you've made and whatever. Um, and Table Chat was hilarious. Some of the conversations were so great. Table Chat was really the best. Um, also, I found the side quests and the item collection fun. Like, I did all of the side quests. I collected items enough to get the trophy for 
crafting every item, so I did craft every item, plus I uh, upgraded all my fragments all the way. So uh, yeah, I thought that the item collection and side quests were fun. One thing I heard that I saw some people uh, critiquing and that I could throw into is that it almost felt like uh, combat was less, in, less important because combat wasn't any part of leveling. Um, the only part of uh, combat was to collect items so that you could craft and stuff. I guess in that way it's kind of similar to from what little I know of uh, some Monster Hunter games, but it was basically the combat was just for item collecting to build better um, better items and whatnot, and to, of course, increase your fragments. Um, I thought the OST was amazing. That kind of gets a little bit away from gameplay, but I'm going to throw it in here and while I'm talking about gameplay. Uh, the OST was really, really good. In fact, I was listening to it while I was uh, writing my bullet points for this review, and I was like, come on, OST, don't make me cry while just writing about this. Um, the setting is brilliant, like I said. I love the open world school feel, and like I said, it really felt like living in this slice of life anime, but also you turn to a magical girl, go off and fight demons and whatnot. Uh, and even then, the four areas of the common were really, really cool. Especially, I think my favorite was the happiness zone. Either that or the happiness fear mix zone, because they looked really, really good. It was probably the most beautiful to me. And one thing that I think really built into that, there were these small comments that every time you went into a new zone, one of the three main characters would comment. And that added so much to things that I wouldn't have thought before. Like, uh, just hearing the characters comment about how pretty the happiness zone was or how it's dangerous watch your step there's lava everywhere talking about the anger zone or with the sadness zone when they're uh, commenting on the mystery of it and the waters and everything I think that added a lot to the atmosphere and made the atmosphere really really good and uh, the one it helped the best was the fear zone where every time you would enter an area the fear zone at least for me they'd always be like uh, the uh, the demons here are the worst, they're my least favorite, or we need to hurry up and get out of here, or I hate this zone the most. And just those little comments expressing dread from the characters made me think that, oh man, the fear zone is like this big bad foreboding place. Even though if those comments weren't there, I probably would have thought it was maybe the least interesting of the zone, since it was kind of just a dark forest when you think about it. Um, but just those little things added so, so much. And even the uh, the demon designs I really, really liked. But talking about the demon designs and the zones and stuff, I got, and the boss battles were amazing. I'll throw them in here while I'm talking about the demon designs. The boss battles were incredible. They were the best part of the combat, of course. Uh, but the combat was the weak point of the game. I think basically anybody who's played will say that, and I can say that. And that's what I feel like, that's something they can work on usually for most game series I've played, the first game in the series has a lot of mistakes that they improve on and do better. And if I think this is the best game I've played, if I love this game so much and it's the first game in the series, imagine if they do continue uh, Blue Reflection as a full series and they tweak things and improve things, how much they can fix things that weren't as good here and do even better with the next ones. Um, it's very much unlike movies where typically they get worse as they go along games typically get better because they can improve things unless you know the company stops caring but that's different discussion that has nothing to do with this uh, but uh, yeah I thought it was great uh, but the combat was the weak point uh, it was fun to me I enjoyed it but it was so I played on the hardest difficulty and it was still so so very easy uh, the boss fights did present a little bit of a challenge but not anything too difficult uh, the only thing I ever struggled with was the hidden boss, which actually defeated me once and I had to go back and try again. But with the exception of that, it was super, super easy. Uh, Lime from nearly the beginning of the game could one-shot just about anything. And uh, in addition to that, with um, basically every fight when I was out collecting materials went about like this. Yuzu was faster than all the other characters. Yuzu hit Grape Wave turn one, kill everything turn one, worked like seven to nine times out of ten. Like, all, almost all the time that would just wipe out every enemy turn one, just first move, Grape Wave, it's done. Uh, so there, there, was, there was that issue. It, it was just that it was unbalanced. 
And there's no problem with if you're leveling as much as I was and stuff and trying to get like all of the uh, side achievements, it makes sense that after a while you're stronger than the enemies. That happens in basically every game. But I think it was the unbalance of it where I just felt like the enemies either they stood no chance or when occasionally they would hit me, they would do a ton of damage and I'd be like, well, it's either I one-shot them or they one-shot me. So, um... There was that kind of lack of balance, but like I said, that could be improved. That could be improved. So the combat was the weak point, but I thought it was still fun. And I even saw somebody bring up that perhaps it was a purposeful choice to make the combat that way to show that they're magical girls. Unless it's like the big boss fights or something, they don't really struggle with these little enemies or whatever. Uh, and it's supposed to make it feel even more like your typical magical girl story or anime. So that could actually be a choice so yeah uh getting into more things i think i covered the gameplay pretty well just i want to say exploring the school and all that very very fun i loved all of that and exploring the common too um but uh the voice acting i thought was great I already kind of brought that up and the character designs thank you kishida mel i'm pretty sure that's the or mel kishida either way i think that's the name of the person who did all the character designs they were really really good uh there were a few that were kind of normal but in general they were really really good but, I don't know, one person in the Discord described it as they looked kind of like anime designs, but with, um, they were sort of like anime designs, but seemed a bit realistic, which I like. I like when anime has that, when it's like, you know, it still has the anime look and feel, but the designs are, aren't are like these crazy shapes and colors or anything. They are very down to earth and look very normal. That's what I got the feeling from from these designs. Also, I didn't put it in my notes, but occasionally there was some fan service, and yes, fan service, please. Uh, <laughs> for such a good story, that's kind of a side note, but um, yeah, there were some fan service scenes that were, uh, yes, please. Um, but other than that, uh, and then to talk about, because I heard the... Um, I at least read the stuff where they were like, ah, depending on fan feedback, this could actually turn into a series, there could be a sequel. Given how the story of this went, I'm actually not sure how to write a sequel, but I'm hoping there will be one. Even if it's what I think would make more sense if they did sort of a uh, spin-off of some kind. Sorry, that was me flipping the pages of my notes. Um, but if they did a spin-off of some kind, I think that could work maybe. I don't know how a direct sequel would work, but I want one. I want this to turn into a full series. I want more Blue Reflection content, uh, because it was that special to me. And now I'm going to talk about each of the characters, because that's something I like to do whenever I do a full show review, and if I make games, it's something I'd want to do for the game review, if the characters are important. And a lot of times in games, the characters aren't that important. But here, they were all developed so well, because of course it felt like you were inside of an anime, kind of. Uh, and that was one of the best parts, and one of the parts that made me the most emotional was because you're playing as this character, you're building these friendships, so it really connects you to all of the characters. Uh, but I'll talk about them a little bit from least to most favorite. Least favorite was Mal. All of them were great. Mal was still a good character. She still had a good place in the story. But she was kind of mean to Hina here and there. Kind of a jerk here and there. So that's why Mao is at the bottom. Uh, 14th would be Rin. Uh, because Rin, or Rin, Rin has kind of a uh, weird place for me where she kind of grew on me a little bit and I kind of liked her. But all of the other characters, I felt like they had complex... Um, and Hinako is the main character. They had complex relationships to Hinako. And they all had sort of complex stories that they themselves had. But with Reen, beginning to end of her story, I didn't feel like she learned that much or changed that much. I feel like she was still basically the same character. And in addition to that, where all of the others had kind of great or complex relationships with Hinako, Rin's relationship with Hinako was kind of, I don't even want to say non-existent, but it seemed like she didn't really care all that much. It was a very casual, nonchalant relationship. So, um, yeah, I almost put Rena in last, but Mal was kind of mean to Hina, so I guess that's why I put her in 15th. Uh, 13th, getting into, besides those two, I absolutely love the rest, and it hurt it hurt me to put any of them at 13. Uh, but it would be Akko. Akko was great. I started off not really liking Akko, but then as the game went along, 
and as we learned more of her story and saw more of her in scenes, I really grew to like Akko a whole hell of a lot. Um, Twelfth, Sarasa. Sarasa was such a great, and the one text message, you're my etoile or whatever, I think was the last thing she said to Hinako. Oh man, that killed me. I was, I was done. I was already crying. Why you gotta kill me like this, Sarasa? Uh, but Sarasa was a great rival character. I really, really liked her and the different development she faced as she hung in there as a friend to Hinako. Um, Eleventh, I'd say Fumio. Uh, Fumio, when we were first introduced to her, I loved everything about her character because I love that type of character. She was sort of stoic, sort of went off to herself, very uh, naive about the world. She was this spoiled rich girl that didn't really know anything. And I typically find characters like that really interesting and um, they usually draw me in and stuff. But the thing is, once Yuri got uh, introduced, I felt like a lot of things were similar between Yuri and Fumio and Yuri's character did them better in her story. Uh, so that's maybe why Fumiho w dropped this low on the list, but I did really, really enjoy the character. Uh, tenth would be Sanae. Sanae was an early favorite of mine that continued to be a favorite of mine, even though she's in tenth throughout the game. Um, at first, I shipped her in Hinako so hard. Um, but yeah, I loved Sanae, and her absolute devotion and happiness to be around Hinako was so... I don't know, it was so endearing. I really liked Sanai as a character. Nine was Rika. Now Rika always complained, why does everybody think I'm normal? Why am I so normal? And here I was thinking the whole game, I was like, you're not, Rin is, Rin is. Rin is the very normal, bland one. You are a good character, Rika. But uh, yeah, Rika was a great character. I really, um, I enjoyed everything between her and Kaori, and just generally, good character, like I said. Eighth was Shihori. Shihori is another one that, at first I didn't really like her that much, but going, because I don't really like the whole looks are super important type of uh, person that much. Um, but Shihori, throughout the course of the game, her relationship building with Hinako made me like her a ton. And I'm not going to get into any spoilers with how her story goes, but Jiori made me like her as a character so much throughout her little side story with all the dates and stuff. Um, seventh, Chihiro. Chihiro, every time she spoke, she broke my heart. Everything about her was so adorable, it made me melt. She was the cutest thing ever. Uh, definitely the most anime stereotypical character, though. Uh, sixth, Kaori. Kaori was great. She was the uh, local delinquent, I guess, of the group. Uh, but I, I really liked her. Of course, gamer girl stereotype and all that. Um, but Kaori was kind of the character that I was like, you know, I could see myself being friends with somebody like her in real life. She seemed really cool. And fifth was somebody, again, I could see myself being friends with in real life. K gets into the top five. K was my favorite for a long time throughout the game because she is so sweet and kind to others and I just wanted to protect her. And I love characters and people who are just that kind and that um, they just give off this nature of being nice to others. So I loved Kay as a character. Um, fourth, Yuri. Yuri was my favorite for a while too because I had seen a bunch of people as I was getting the game and first starting out, a bunch of people saying, oh, Yuri is best girl. She is, you're going to like her the best. Everybody likes her the best. She is, she is the best. And I was like, I don't know. I really, really like uh, Kay and I really like Lime. But then Yuri's story hit and I was introduced to her and I went through all of her story and stuff and I was like, damn was I wrong, man, she is a good character. Yuri was a really great character. And uh, she has something that makes her very, very unique that I thought was so cool that they actually said it and they developed a character that was that way and I don't want to spoil what it is, it can be a surprise to some people, but Yuri was so good, such a great character. Third, Hinako. Uh, the last three chapters of this game, when I played them, they switched what I thought about characters around a ton, and the three main characters jumped up to the top three spots and were just solidly there for me. Hinako is in third. Um, her development throughout the course of the game and her learning things that were really important and really important to her, and her development and changes were so, so good. Because a lot of times with main characters, especially in games, when they make a decision that you don't understand or agree with or that doesn't make sense, it gets frustrating because it's like I'm supposed to be the person playing them and stuff.
But Hinako never felt that way. Every time she made a decision, it was something you could understand, something you could sympathize with. She was just a really, really good main character to play as. And then there's a power gap between her and the second play spot, and that is Yuzu, or Shijo Yuzuki. Man, Yuzu was so good. At first, I was like, I like her character. Then about halfway through the game, or a little past halfway, I was like, I absolutely love Yuzu's character. And then at the end, I was like, Yuzu is the best thing ever and must be taken care of. So I loved Yuzu as a character so, so much. And she is only overshadowed by one other character. And Chapter 11 makes me absolutely adore Yuzu as a character. But again, there is another power gap, even wider, to number one, Lime, or Raimu. <laughs> Lime is my precious fruit that I must protect. It's uh, apt that I'm recording this on Valentine's Day, because she is my waifu for laifu. I was, I had this connection with Lime throughout the game where I was like, there were points where I doubted her, points where I thought that maybe she wasn't that great of a character, maybe she wasn't that great of a friend to Hinako, and everything just worked out to the point where, though she was cold on the outside, she was the best, kindest, greatest person ever. And just, I grew so much respect for Lime over the course of this series and everything she did. Um, so yeah, and also, gameplay-wise, Lime was an absolute broken beast, but completely adorable. So I loved Lime in the game as well. In the gameplay, uh, but in the story, she was just such a significant character for me. Uh, I had such a connection to Lime as a character. So, um, yeah, definitely my favorite character in the game. Maybe my favorite character in video games overall, ever. Um, so, yeah, Lime was the best. Uh, so, to wrap this up, after talking about all that, I will say that I thought it had an amazing story. I thought the visuals were great. Uh, there were some things that could be improved for the next game, of course. Uh, I thought the combat was solid. There was never any mistakes, never any bugs or glitches or anything like that. Uh, it was very solid, but a little unbalanced. Well, a bit unbalanced. It was <laughs> it was pretty broken how strong the main characters were at a lot of times. So uh, the combat was solid. It was never broken or anything, but it was very, very unbalanced. So for me personally, I'd give it a 10 out of 10, but that's the thing with video games is that Depending on what you like, what you prefer when it comes to not only stories, but settings and also gameplay, uh, there are some people that just don't like this type of gameplay and probably wouldn't like it at all. So while it's a 10 out of 10 for me, and while I would implore people to give it a chance and experience this story, I know that it's not for everyone. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of my thoughts on it. Also, one thing I just remembered as I was talking about that, that I saw some people bring up. Some people said they had trouble when playing with uh, frame drops or anything. I never had that except occasionally when I would load into a new area in the... Uh, what's, what zone was it? I think it was, I think it was my favorite one. I think it was the fear and um, the joy and fear zone. Uh, the mix zone. Whenever I would load into a new area there for like a quick two seconds or something, like when I first loaded in, it'd get a little framey and then even out back to normal. Um, but that was the only time I experienced anything, and again, that was incredibly negligible for it to only be a few seconds every time something, some specific thing happened. Uh, but yeah, that was the only issue I had with that, so I think maybe I played on PS4, that might be coming from people who played on PC and maybe their PC couldn't handle it that well. Uh, I'm not sure how demanding it is. Uh, so yeah, it would be, ah oh man, this is, this is my favorite game. I really hope we have more content, more Blue Reflection content, whether it's, whether it is an anime, whether it's another game, whether that game be a sequel or a spinoff. Or just an alternate, uh, an alternate version or something. I, uh, I really want more Blue Reflection. So uh, I enjoyed it. I love this game. There's another 30-minute review coming after me recording 30 minutes yesterday. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. So uh, like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this or what you thought of my thoughts on this game. What your thoughts are on the game if you've played it. I would love, love to talk about this game more with other people. Uh, if you want to link to the Discord server, ask and I can give you a link to that and you can talk with me, more of us there, uh, from the channel. Um, uh, subscribe for more 
anime manga light novels and stuff. I will maybe review other video games. I've got a few that I have to play. If you're interested in more video game videos, whether it's reviews and stuff, um, or gameplay, just ask. I'd love to do gameplay videos and playthroughs and stuff on the channel just as a side thing. Um, I just need a better computer and stuff in order to do so. Uh, so maybe one day in the future that's something I hope to do. Uh, but if you're interested in stuff like that, let me know. Um, also follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there on stuff for the channel or talk to you there if you want to. Uh, but that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.